Mark presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of the Lux Radio Theater, starring Donna Reed and Jeffrey Hunter in Rawhide. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we present Academy Award winner Donna Reed and that talented young actor, Jeffrey Hunter, in an exciting saga of the Old West, Rawhide. What a box of screen hits. It tells the story of two strangers who meet at a lonely stagecoach station and are held as hostages by an escaped criminal. A hundred years ago, the territory of New Mexico included much of the area now known as Arizona and New Mexico. But a hundred years ago, the hardy traveler fought of the territory as a vast wasteland separating California from the east. A wasteland of hostile Indians and ruthless bandits. And of something known to its friends as the jackass male. Oh. Oh. A cloud of dust moving across the arid plateau, upward through mountain passes, oh. downward along icy streams, endlessly across the desert. A plunging, pounding, panting thing of mule flesh and wood and iron and human determination. That was the Overland Mail. San Francisco to St. Louis in 25 days. 2,700 miles in 25 days and 25 nights. The shortest, fastest, back-breakingest ride you could buy for $200 gold. Meals included. The eating part of it came at the various relay stations along the route, at lonely cabins and adobe posts, where fresh teams were hitched to the stage. Rawhide Pass was one such station. Hey, Tom, that's the stage. I heard it, Sam. Well, going to wait out there all day. Answer him. All right. company rules. Well, it's a good rule, let me tell you. Without us blowing that bugle, how's the stage going to know everything's all right in here? Maybe there's engines or road agents hiding to ambush them. I get the point, Sam. I got it six months ago. Well, you sure don't act like it. You think I'm getting a kick out of learning you the stage business? You... Oh, come on, let's get them mules ready. All right, folks. Thirty minutes for food and washing up. Hey, hey, Scott, you haven't got a baby in there. Know anything else that sounds like this? Well, I hope not. Well, I mean, uh, no, ma'am, I don't. This is Tom Owens, Mrs. Holt. He does most of the cooking at this station. Maybe he can help you. I'd be glad to, Mrs. Holt. Have you got some milk? Milk? Oh, of course not. Uh, how about some dry oatmeal? All right, folks, this way. Well, I, I, I think so, Miss Holt. All right, uh, mix it with some water. Maybe I can get Callie to drink it. I'll fix it as soon as we change the team, Mrs. Holt. Thank you. And uh, if you don't mind... Yes? I'm not Mrs. Holt. I'm Miss. Tom? Hey, Tom! Hey, now, listen here, boy. I can't change those mules by myself. <laughs> All right, Tom, put your eyes back in your head. You've seen a pretty woman before. Or was all them stories about the St. Louis gals just stories? <laughs> Come on, Tom. All right, Sam, all right. Let's get those mules. More coffee, Miss... Uh, ma'am? No, thank you. 
I bet you was never fed a meal by a cook wearing a six-shooter before. Eh, hey, ma'am? You call this a meal? Won't do any good complaining. Tom here is the son of J.C. Owens. So anything Tom does has got to be right. Who's J.C. Owens? Superintendent of the Eastern Division of the Overland Mail. Uh-huh. Well, folks, we better be getting back to the stage. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Listen. I'm going to get my rifle. What is it? Callie, it's all right, it's all right. Damn, forget the rifle. Who is it? It's just government troops. Looks like a patrol. Can we help you, Lieutenant? Hope so. Where's the driver, Miss B? There he is. You just pulled in from the west? Half hour ago. You see four men on the road? Nope. Nobody. Who are you looking for, Lieutenant? A fellow named Ray Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Zimmerman? I thought they had him in prison over at Huntsville. Yeah, he broke out the day before he was due to be hanged. He and three others. They held up Johnny Madden's stage outside of Armistia. Johnny Madden? What? Well, he drove through here just yesterday. That's right. And today he's dead. Johnny Madden. The oldest driver on the line next to me. But why? Why did they do it? Johnny's stage wasn't carrying a gold shipment. They must have thought it was. Anyway, my patrol is here to give you West Road as far as Mama Seal. That suits me. All right, everybody, climb in. Over. Oh, uh, Miss Holt. Yes. Sorry, but you and your baby will have to stay here. Why? Company rule, ma'am. What rule? I paid my fare. It took all the money I could scrape up. Now, I'm going through to St. Louis. On the next stage, maybe, ma'am. You see, the company rule says that when there's a danger of Indians or road agents, the stage can't carry any passengers under the age of 12. Now, uh, of course, if you want to leave your baby here with Miss us... Miss Callie? Huh. Well, I guess not. We're going to get on that stage, both of us. Hey, Sam. Get the lady's bags off the stage. All right. No, don't you dare. Well, Miss Hope, there's no use of you arguing. Get out of my way. Miss Hope, please. Get your hands off me. Let me go. All right, Scott, get that stage going and get out of here. You no, man. no, no. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. I, I hope you're proud of what you've done, Mr. Owen. Oh, I'm awful sorry, ma'am, but you see, rules are rules. I think these are all your bags, Mrs. Holt. Miss Holt, if you please. Huh? How's that? Never mind, Sam. You look after the mules and I'll carry your things inside. <sighs> Miss Holt? Oh, uh, Sam. Uh, you? How about putting your eyes back in your head? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Well, I hardly imagined the son of the superintendent of the division would be washing dishes. Well, Sam and I take turns. See, it's all part of my education. Education? Yes. Yeah. See, uh, six months working the relay station, six months riding boot on a stage, and a year in a division office, I'm ready for any job they got. And uh, your six months here? Well, that's up next week. But uh, is there something you wanted? Uh, yes. Is there some place around here I can take a bath? Well, there's a basin and pitcher of water in your room. I said a bath. All right, come on. See that thing across the yard that Sam's pumping water into? The horse trough? Yeah, now, you just see that you don't use any soap in it. Is that where you take a bath? No, there's a hot spring in the canyon back of the station. Ah, that's more likely. But you're going to have to watch out for snakes. Oh, then maybe I'd better borrow your revolver. (laughs) All right. And maybe your gun belt, too. That's not a bad idea. You can't hit them, at least you can scare them to death. I can hit them. Don't you worry about that. Hey, Tom. I'm coming, Sam, I'm coming. You wouldn't let her take your gun. Oh, she says she knows how to use it. Uh-huh. Maybe too well. <laughs> Sam, I don't figure her for a lady road agent. Well, what do you figure her for? Well, I don't know. Yeah, she sure knows what she wants, you know. Took over my bed, my bedroom, moved my gear out, and made it a nursery for her and the baby. Hey. Hmm? What's that? What's what? Well, I thought I heard something. 
There, yeah, that's it. Yeah, somebody's coming up the gully. I see him. They're just rounding them boulders. Tom, there's that spare rifle in the stable. Get it. Stay out of sight and cover. You be careful, Tom. Hello. Morning. You the snake and keeper? I'm his helper. Oh, where's the boss? Oh, he's around here. Just two of you do, huh? That's right. I guess you wonder who I am, or maybe this badge will help. Oh, Deputy Sheriff? Yeah, Deputy Sheriff Miles from Huntsville. Well, I'm glad to know you. Owens is my name. Howdy. Suppose you could pick me up with a meal? Sure can. Hey, Sam. Sam, it's all right. It's the sheriff. You can come out now. All right. <laughs> Not taking any chances, I see. Well, that's the way to stay alive in this country. Especially with Rape Zimmerman on the loose. Yeah. Especially with Zimmerman. Howdy, Sheriff. Uh, you stay with your horse? Oh, as soon as I'm off him, you can't. All right, boys, reach for it. Tom, he ain't no sheriff. Get your hands up, I said. Higher. That's it. What's that for? Yeah, who are you signaling? Some friends of mine down on the gully. Now, maybe I better really introduce myself. My name's Zimmerman. <laughs> Hey, Sam, you in there? Where, where you be, Sam? Oh, cast him. Well, he got them with the hands in the air. Rats, there's a rifle on the wall. Use it to cover these fellas. Uh, yes, sir. Have us you search the other room. See if there's anybody else around. You bet. Yeah, I'd say you put our horses in the corral. Hide the saddles. Sure. Good idea, boy. And now, Mr. Owens and Mr. What's your name? Sam Todd. All right, I now want some answers from you two, and I want them right. What time's the next stage due here? I said, when? There's one from the east tonight. What time? About sundown. The stage from the west? Mm, tomorrow afternoon. Uh-huh. How much gold is it carrying? How much? There are none. That shipment went through today. Oh. Never would stop it. He'll get more than that the next time he lies to me. The California stage comes through tomorrow morning. Carrying 100,000 on gold bars consigned by Crocker Mine and Company in Sacramento to the government men in New York. And why ask us? Because I'm testing you. And letting you know I got everything figured. <laughs> hey, Zim, come look. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Take a look. Ain't I fetching in this here bonnet? Grats, keep them covered. Yes, sir. Well, now, yeah. tell me how pretty it is. That's rifle's out in the stable, isn't it? Yeah. Stable, isn't it? yeah. Stable, I've been thinking about that. Hey, you. Hmm? What's the mystery about? Well, that's one. Nothing at all. I don't know. I'm going to make a break for it. No, not now. Later. Go on. Todd. Where is she? Where's who? The woman, your wife. I ain't got no wife. All right, then she's all in. Wife. Where is she? Where's your wife? That's a good question, since I'm not married. Don't lie to me. <laughs> now tell me. <laughs> what you wanted me to do, one isn't him? Now, how about this other one? No, we need him. Gratz, take him to the bedroom. Lock him up. Yeah, boy. You go first. Mr. Owens. All right. Severus, right after you fired, did you hear a woman scream? Hey, come to think of it, I did. Damn. A baby? Yeah, here they come. Yancey's bringing them in. Hey, look at what I found, boy. <laughs> I found this rifle out in the stable, and then I see this lady and this baby cutting across the yard. You murderers. I saw you kill Sam. Good. Then you know what you're up against. All right, Tevis, take her back and lock her up with her husband. My husband? Why, sure. Or don't you like him since you've seen me, <laughs> Come on. Keep your hands off me. Oh, touchy, ain't you? I like him with spunk. Have it. Have it. I ain't doing nothing, Jim. All right. 
Oh, get in there. I was hoping he'd get away if you'd hear those shots back in the canyon. How long do you think it takes for a bath? Hey, wait a minute. What happened to my gun and the cartridge belt? I dropped them. You dropped them? Yes, I... Well, I was so startled when I heard those shots. It's the wonder I didn't drop Callie, too. Where's the gun now? I don't know. I think... Well, I, I think just the other side of that pile of firewood along the corral. Mm. A lot of good it's going to do us out there. Us? I'm not in this thing with you. Miss Holt, or Mrs. Holt, or whatever your name it's is. Miss Vinnie Holt. And while we're on the subject, Mr. Owen, what right have you to tell those men you're my husband? I didn't tell them. That's Zimmerman's idea. And it just might be the thing that'll save your skin. Oh? You're sure it's not your own skin you're worried about? Well, sure I am. The killing me doesn't seem to be part of their plan, at least not yet. See, they need me alive until that stage comes through with that big gold ship, and I'm going to be their decoy. What's that got to do with them thinking I'm your wife? No, I'm staying out of your mess. I'm going to tell them the truth. Now, look. Can't you understand, Miss Holt, that they'll be nice to you as long as they think you're important to me? Until they don't need you any longer. But after they get the gold shipment... Well, I'm... I'm just hoping we'll figure out something before then. And if we don't, then what happens? What do you think? Why, I think I'd like to live. Even if it's just for another 24 hours. It's late afternoon in the lonely station at Rawhide Pass, where Vinny and Tom are held prisoners. In the main room of the station, Zimmerman, Tevis, Yancey, and Drat wait impatiently for the arrival of the stagecoach from the east. in the cupboard. Put it back. Oh, now, Zim. Right now. Oh. There's not going to be any drinking. That goes for you, too, Gratz. Yeah, yeah, sir. Did you hear that, Yancey? Well, you know, I ain't no drinking man, boss. All I ever done wrong in my whole life was to steal that horse. If it wasn't for that, you and me had never met. I regret it even more than you, mister. Just because you three busted out of jail along with me, that doesn't mean I picked you for this job. You just came along. And that's my bad luck. Now, there's no call to talk so on, or is him? Everything's going just right. Is it? Look out there in the yard. There's Todd's body laying there for the whole world to see. But if any of you got brains enough to go bury him, no. I gotta tell you everything. Well, I'll bury him, Zim. I'll put up a nice little cross over Are his you head. crazy? All we need for the stagecoach to come along and see a cross. Grat. You go bury him. You're so dumb, you couldn't get any wrong ideas. Yes, him. I do it good. The rest of you keep a lookout for that stage from the east. Might come through here early. What you gonna do, Zim? Never mind. On. Yeah? I don't remember seeing you wear a revolver. Where is it? Oh, my gun? Yes, your gun. It's in Tucson. I sent it in the effect. What was wrong with it? Broken fire and tin. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Owens, I'm going to have to look through your things. I'm not stopping you. Go ahead. Search the whole room if you want to. If you're lying to me. Go ahead. Look. If we had a gun, we wouldn't be putting up with your bullying. <laughs> That's the point, ma'am. Owens. Yeah? When the stage from the east comes through, I want everything just as usual around here. You feed the passengers and the crew and get them on their way again with no question. Well, they want to know where Sam is. You tell him he's gone to Tucson, or to Yuma. Say he had a bad tooth. He had to go to a dentist. I guess that'll work. It'll better work. A lady here and a baby, they'll be counting on you to see that it does. Company, Rose. Huh. What are you talking about? Your wonderful company rule that was supposed to be 
supposed to keep the baby and me out of danger. If you would let us go through on that stage, in another week, Callie would have been with her father's family, safe. Now, now, that brings up something I've been meaning to ask you. Where is her father? Dead. Killed three months ago. Her mother, too. Oh, but I thought that she was... I told you, I'm plain Jenny Holt. Callie isn't my baby. Her mother, Jeannie, was my sister. She married a gambler who got the gold fever and just had to go to California. And what took you out there? Jeannie wouldn't go without me. Now I'm going home without her. You say she and her husband were killed? How? Well, Jeannie was too pretty and Johnny was too jealous. One night a, a drunken plane jumper took a fancy to her and when the shooting was over, I was alone with Callie. Well, that explains some things. You does? Yeah. I guess you've got reason enough not to like men. I don't? Is that the impression I get? You sure do. Tom. Mm-hmm, that's the stage. There must be some way to get word to All right, them. now we've got to be careful. Zimmerman will be watching us like a hawk. Wait a minute. There was some paper and a pencil around here. It's on the bureau. You just said they'll be watching you every instant. And that may give you a chance. Here, hide this in your blouse. And you be careful. If anything goes wrong, they'll shoot down everyone. I know, but don't you think... Owen, why isn't that stage coming on in? They're waiting for me to answer them. All right, then do it. Come on out here. Yancey. Go on back there and stay with the baby. Lock yourself in that room and keep her quiet. Sure, I will. I just love babies. Now, what about my wife? I was coming to her. Tevis. Yes, him. Take Mrs. Owens out the back way. Take her up in that canyon behind the station. Far enough so she can't yell. <laughs> you bet. This is the kind of work I enjoy. Well, Zimmerman, you can't do that. Not with Tevis. Why not? Well, you know why as well as I do. Just look at it. She'll be all right. But as long as you don't make any mistakes. Now, where's your bugle? Hanging over there. All right, go get it. Sim, you told everybody what to do except me. You're going to be out in the stable with your rifle, Gratz. You cover Owens and me when we meet the stage. Yeah, good. <laughs> Owens and his old friend, Deputy Sheriff Miles. Owens, I said answer him. Much of it. Just didn't have time to fix it, that's all. Well, why not? I've been too busy. Oh, oh busy doing what? All right, Tom, I thought you told him. Hmm? You know, about Sam. Sam? Yeah, about his toothache and having to go to the dentist and two sons. Oh, yeah, he told his sheriff. And you're staying on here to help out? Yeah, I... I asked him to. Uh, Mr. Figgert, where are you bound for? Oh, just traveling, Sheriff. Uh-huh. What about you, Mr. Chickering? I'm going to California. Hey, you know something, Sheriff? There's something about you that... You... There is? Yeah, I keep thinking now. Ain't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, well, maybe. You ever been to Huntsville? No, <laughs> I never went to either. And that's where the territorial prison is located, isn't it? The one that fellow Zimmerman broke out of? Yeah, that's the one, Mr. Pickett. I suppose, Sheriff, you must have known Zimmerman. Well, I, uh... I saw him once or twice. Mr. Fickett's from the New York Herald, Sheriff. He's probably looking for a story. Oh, a newspaper man, eh? You uh, hear that, Tom? Maybe uh, 
You could give Mr. Figgers a story, huh? Oh, uh, would you, Mr. Owens? Uh, maybe something with flavor and excitement? I'm sorry, Mr. Figgers. Nothing much happens around here. Uh, Sheriff, about this fellow Zimmerman. Yeah. I understand he came from a pretty high toll family. Uh, that's right, he did. Uh, if you met him, you'd probably take him for a complete gentleman. You can call a murderer a gentleman. Well, I heard he went wrong and caught some woman, a Creole from New Orleans. Yeah, they say she was a real looker. Then we caught a double dealing him with some other young fancy dance. Still involved. You seem to know quite a bit about Zimmerman, Mr. Figger. Well, don't forget I'm a newspaper man. Well, uh, why don't you tell us the rest of the story? I uh, don't see what you can add to that story except when they capture him again and hang him. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chickering, what's your line of business? Uh, I'm a drummer, a Colt Firearms, Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, no, is that so? I hear Colt's getting out some new army models. That's what I'm taking to California. I'll assure you. Uh, no. No. No, no, that's all right. No trouble. Got my sample case right here. There. Did you ever see such beauties? Do you mind if I handle one, Mr. Chickering? Tom. Go right ahead. We're proud of our product. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice balance. If you want to test it, I've got ammunition out in the stage. <laughs> You're an excellent salesman, Mr. Chickering. But I don't think there's time for that. What was that? It's just a coyote. Yeah. Like it came from the canyon. Well, it might have. Uh, Tom, may I see the gun, please? Tom? It came from the canyon. It's only a coyote. The gun, Tom? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kind of noise, ain't it, girl? Yes. Is that why you're shivering? It's cold. Oh, stage will be pulling out almost any time. Plenty of moonlight so we can see it from up. <whistles> hey, you know what that coyote is howling about? He just calling for his lady friend. Come and be sweet to him. Even old coyote is not really friend. Mr. Tebbett, please. Oh, Mr. Tebbett. You don't have to be so nice and nice, girl. Hey, don't run away. I ain't going to hurt you now. I'll tell Zimmerman. I'll let him know just how you left him. You think I'm afraid of him, huh? Just because he thinks he runs things? Mr. Tebbett. Mr. Tebbett, Mr. Tebbett. Little girl, you know how long it's been since I've seen a pretty face? Two years. Two long years. Hey, wait a minute, girlie. I told you, I'm not going to hurt you, no. Hey. What's that you dropped? What? You dropped that piece of paper. No. I... Yes, you did. I seen that fall out of your blouse. My, my blouse? Well, there it is, right there at your feet. Oh, Mr. Tebbett. Now, I... pick it up. Go on. But it, it's now, give it only to me. a letter, a, a personal letter. Yeah. Who from? My brother. Well, let me see if it is. Well, you can't read it. There's no light. There's moonlight. That's good enough. Now, hand it over. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. I guess you can have it back. What? Your letter. You thought I didn't know how to read, didn't you? Well, I guess I showed you, didn't I? <laughs> Yes, Mr. Tarrant. I guess you did. You did indeed. Everybody aboard? Everybody. So long, Davis. So long, Sam. You chip. Goodbye, gentlemen. All right, Owen, back indoors. My wife is over there. Tevis is bringing her in. Come on. Now, just a minute. Yeah? Shut the front door. Hmm. Now, come here. Something wrong? Yeah. 
plenty. Oh. That's for trying to get that salesman's gun. And that's for not following my orders. And that's how you'll remember next time. Oh. What's the matter? You're waking the baby. How do you think she can sleep with all this racket? Oh, get out of here, Yancey. Jim. Go on back to the room. Oh, all right, boss. All right, now I'm going to have to rock her to sleep again. Are you... You're through with me, Zimmerman. No. <laughs> That's Vinny. Don't move. I want to stay where you are. <laughs> oh, Tavis is after her. Vinny? Vinny! Oh, thank you. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Everything will be all right. Come in. Come in here. Oh, I didn't hurt her, Zim. Come in here. Now, don't go getting sore, Zim, because I'm... Why, I'm you... Come, sir! Jim! I told you to leave her alone. I did, Jim, I did. I told you. Don't, don't. All right, get up. Come on, I'll get you for this, Jim. I'll kill you. All right. Try it. Well, go on. Draw. You'd like me to, wouldn't you? I'm not going to. No, I didn't think you would. All right, Owens. Back to your room. You too, Mrs. Owens. I'll get you yet, Tim. I'll get you. Yeah, you haven't got the guts. Shh. Jim, doggone it. I told you be quiet. The baby now. You can forget about her, Yancey. Yeah, we'll take care of her. Tally. Tally, honey. I'll see both of you in the morning. Tom. Wait. He may be listening at the door. All right. Could you get word to the stage driver? No. Oh, Tom, what are we going to do? I don't know. We just, we've got to keep on thinking and trying. But for how long? How much time have we got? Until the stage comes through from California with that gold shipment? Until tomorrow morning. <laughs> Some 12 hours have passed since Zimmerman and his companions took over the station at Rawhide Pass. Locked in the small back room of the station, Tom stares hopelessly through the barred windows while Vinny attempts to comfort the restless baby. Now, now, Carol. It's all right. Go to sleep. Sick? No, I think it's that howling coyote that bothers me. There was just some way of closing that window so we couldn't hear it. It'd be better if there was some way of getting out through it. You know, the company put up those iron bars so it's still valuable. How thoughtful of them. What is it? Press your face against these bars and have look as far to the right as you can. Yeah. Now, you see that stack of firewood by the corral? Yes. Well, uh, that's about where you dropped my revolver, isn't that right? Yes, on the far side. Well, maybe it's still there. It must be. If anybody found it, we'd hear about it. Then we've got to get that gun. Well, how? Well, it, I know. If we could break a hole through this adobe wall, tunnel an opening big enough to crawl through it. And dig it out with our fingernails, I suppose. Hmm. I only need something with a sharp point to it, sharp and strong. You must have a butcher knife out in the kitchen. Oh, sure. Then let me get it. For you? Yes, it'll be easier for me. But how? Well, uh, I'll... Yes, I'll use this water pitcher. I'll tell them I need water for the baby. And I'll hide the knife inside the pitcher. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. We've got to try, Tom. All right. Zimmerman? Zimmerman, come here. Tell me exactly where I'll find that knife. You know where the cask of water is? Alongside the cup. Yeah, that's right. Well, the last time I saw it was right on the table next. Good. What do you want? The baby's got a fever. I want to get her some water. 
All right, give me the picture. Uh, no, I, I'll fill it. Well, I don't know. The picture has to be reached out first, Mr. Zimmerman. And I don't want to ask such a favor of you. All right. Well, come on. Uh, would you know what time it is? It's almost midnight. Where's Kevin? He's outside. I put him on lookout. You're sure? About what? That he's on lookout. What do you mean? Where'd you see him? Oh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Zimmerman, I'd like to fill this picture. Yeah, I'd see. Where's Kevin? Well, he's outside, isn't he? Grass, have you seen him? Me, Sim? Kevin! Hey, Kevin! I thought you said Tevis wasn't out there. I didn't say that at all. No? Then what were you trying to say? Why, nothing. Mr. Zimmerman, are you always as nervous as this? You filled your picture? Yes. Then come on. What's the matter with your baby? I, I don't know. She's just very feeble. I don't know why she had to be here anyway. Why not? I just don't like her being here, that's all. Good night, Mr. Zimmerman. Yeah. Good night. Did you get it? Here. Good. And I found a place to take. Right here at the base of the north wall. You want some whiskey? If you put it away, you know what Tim said. Yeah, I know. Hardly big enough for a child to crawl through. A child? Benny, do you think maybe the baby? Oh, be... oh, Tom, really? You think all I have to say is a Callie here climb through this hole and crawl across the yard to that pile of firewood and bring back that big shiny revolver? Yeah, 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 you're right. 
Oh, she's just old enough to talk to understand. Well, I guess that's it. Yes, that's it. Digging our hands raw like a couple of rats. But what? For 24 hours, we'd let those murderers walk all over us, order us around, do this, do that, and we did it. You can't argue with a gun. Why not? Where has this gotten us? Well, we're still alive, aren't we? Still alive. You know what's going to happen just as well as I do. Well, sure I do. Any minute now, they're going to come in here and take me out there to harness that team. I'm Zimmerman's bait for the stagecoach, a bait for ambush. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Say, I'm sorry, Mr. Zimmerman, I'm not working today? Oh, Kelly, Kelly, please. And maybe I've been wrong about something else, too. Maybe we shouldn't have pretended to be Mr. and Mrs., but I figured it was a good bargain for both of us. I thought they'd treat you all right because they wanted me to cooperate. Oh, yes. They just treated me wonderful, especially Heather. All right, from here on out, you can just do better on your own. Maybe you better tell Zimmerman who you are. Maybe I will. Callie, stop it. Stop it. What's going on in there? Go ahead, Bennett. Now's the time. Go ahead and tell him. Tell me what, Mrs. Owen? Well, what did you want to tell me? Nothing. It's nothing that concerns you, Mr. Zimmerman. A husband and wife can quarrel in private, can't they? Well, it wasn't very private. Oh, and the stage ought to be along any time. Get out there and hitch up the team. All right. Tom? No. You stay in here, Mrs. Owen. yelling about. My baby, she's outside. I've got to get hey, to no, her. No, you don't. Now, no tricks. But my back. baby, Kelly. No. Let me go. Let me Please go. Get I'm back. Get go her. Her. Them, I didn't do nothing. She was yelling and pounding I on the door. I want you for the last time. You hear me? You hear me? Oh, no more. All right, get back in the room, Mrs. Owen. I'll see that he doesn't bother you anymore. Oh. Uh. Travis. I said I'd get you, Zim. I told you I would. Show me where it is. Come on. Zim, where are you? Zim, come quick. I'm the other side of the wood pile, Tom. The other side. All right, where is it? I don't know, but it's got to be here. Young Zim, Zim said somebody killed him. I did. I'm the boss now, you hear? You want all the gold for yourself? No, that's not right. <laughs> Tom. Yeah, that's just one less of them. Now, 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 don't you have it. Don't you run with it. The gun, the gun, where is it? Tom, there, almost under that log. Oh, I see. Owen! Oh, Keep down, Tom. Keep down. It's no use, Owen. I'm coming after you. Come ahead, Tevis. Hey! You didn't expect that, did you, Tevis? You know, I've got plenty bullets, Owen. My gun and zims and grasses. <laughs> oh, Tom, there's Callie. I've got to don't get... you, don't you, Stacey. It's a blue Shut up, now. You want to give Tevis ideas? Hey, Owen. You see that baby? It's what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. This time I may not miss. Good. You might do for 
dirty. I start walking towards me. I said, start walking. about you. You're leaving too, aren't you? No, my relief won't get here until next week. I'm just going to have to wait until then. Tom, do you mind if I wait and go back with you? I was hoping you might want to. I do, Tom. I do. I'd better answer that bugle and let him know that everything's all right. It is all right. Isn't it, Minnie? Oh, yes, Tom. Everything's all right now. Conrad as Zimmerman, Lawrence Dobkin as Tevis, Tim Graham as Sam, Polly Bear as Yancey, and Jack Crucian as Gratz. Our radio play was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Our music composed and directed by Rudy Schrager. <laughs>